Hey there, fellow time travelers of TV nostalgia. Television, do you remember those cozy evenings back in the day, nestled on the couch with your family, eagerly awaiting the latest drama from the hallowed halls of Falcon Crest? Ah, the memories. Whether you tuned in for the conniving schemes of Angela Channing, or perhaps you were more of a Lance Cumpson fan, we all had our favorites, didn't we? And those cliffhangers that left us hanging on the edge of our seats, wondering what would happen next. As I sit here reminiscing, I can't help but think about the countless hours spent immersed in the glamour and intrigue of Tuscany Valley. It's amazing how a TV show can become such an integral part of our lives, sparking conversations, debates, and even dreams. So, dear friends, what are your fondest recollections of Falcon Crest? Who made you laugh? Who made you cringe? And who had you guessing at every turn? Share your cherished moments, your most beloved characters, and the emotions this timeless series stirred in you. And now, let's dive into some random, fascinating facts about the show that will surely add a new layer to your Falcon Crest experience. Intrigued? You should be. Let's embark on this nostalgic journey together as we uncover the hidden gems and trivia from the world of Falcon Crest. Get ready for a trip down memory lane. Memory Lane. Sophia Loren's missed opportunity in Falcon Crest in 1981. The hit TV series Falcon Crest had big plans for its character Francesca Gioberti. The role was initially offered to the legendary Italian actress Sophia Loren. The producers had hoped to entice her with promises of a fabulous wardrobe and a dynamic character that could rival Alexis Colby from Dynasty. Ironically, Sophia Loren had previously been Aaron Spelling's first choice for the character of Alexis in Dynasty, but negotiations broke down due to salary demands, leading Joan Collins to step into the iconic role. While Loren's potential involvement in Falcon Crest generated buzz, the contract negotiations ultimately fell through. As a result, the part was then offered to another Italian actress, Gina Lollabrigida, known for her roles in classic films like Beat the Devil and Come September. Though Lauren missed out on Falcon Crest, her name is forever linked to the show's early history. It's a curious twist of fate that connects two iconic TV dramas of the era and highlights the complex world of casting decisions in Hollywood. In the end, Falcon Crest continued to captivate audiences with its own blend of drama and intrigue, cementing its place in television history. In the world of the 1981 TV series Falcon Crest, behind-the-scenes drama was not limited to the screen. At the end of the eighth season, Susan Sullivan, who portrayed Maggie Gioberti Channing, found herself at odds with the show's new management. Money issues played a role in her departure, but creative differences also played a significant part. The changes made by the new writers and producers during season eight were a departure from what had come before, and not in a way that Sullivan agreed with. As a result, she parted ways with the series, but not completely. Sullivan made a return as a guest star in two episodes, appearing at the outset of the ninth and final season. While Falcon Crest had its fair share of fictional drama, real-life figures also left their mark on the show's characters. William Randolph Hearst served as an inspiration for the character of Richard Channing, adding a touch of real-life influence to the show's intrigue. Meanwhile, the character Michael Sharp bore loose resemblance to a young Donald Trump, and the creators even drew from Jack Nicholson's portrayal of the Joker to shape his persona. As for Jane Wyman, who played Angela Channing, she aimed to distinguish her character from the J.R., Ewing-like archetype often seen in television. Wyman wanted Angela to represent women in business, emphasizing that while her character could come across as hard and tough, she also had the capacity for compassion and love. This nuanced portrayal set her apart in the realm of television. In Falcon Crest, the drama extended far beyond the scripted lines, with behind-the-scenes decisions and real-life influences shaping the course of the show and its characters. It's a testament to the complexity of the series and the era it inhabited. Habited. 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 In the 1981 TV series Falcon Crest, many of Jane Wyman's friends made appearances on the show. Notable guest stars included Cesar Romero, Eve Arden, Eddie Albert, and Jeffries, Rod Taylor, and Kao Laikai. These familiar faces added to the show's appeal and star-studded cast. Before Falcon Crest, Lorenzo Lamas had worked with Eddie Albert on the series Switch. Lamas appeared twice on the show, playing different roles. In one episode, he portrayed a bodyguard, and in another, he took on the character of a soccer contestant. 
This collaboration between llamas and Albert added an interesting connection between the two actors in the world of television. During Falcon Crest's run, there was a memorable earthquake scene. What's intriguing is that almost all of the main actors were replaced by stunt doubles for this particular sequence. This behind-the-scenes choice highlights the importance of safety in television production, even in dramatic moments. These insights provide a glimpse into the world of Falcon Crest, showcasing the connections between cast members and the dedication to safety in bringing the show to life. 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 Jane Wyman's unyielding control in feuds on the set of Falcon Crest in the world of 1981 TV series Falcon Crest. Behind-the-scenes drama was sometimes as intense as the on-screen intrigues. One notable inside joke involved reused police uniforms from the short-lived serial Flamingo Road, starring David Selby. These uniforms, originally set in the fictional town of Truro, Florida, found their way onto the set of Falcon Crest, offering a subtle nod to Selby's previous role. However, the most significant behind-the-scenes drama revolved around Jane Wyman, who played the formidable character Angela Channing. Allegedly, Wyman had an iron grip over the show, mirroring her character's ruthless nature. Former co-stars Mel Fur, Celeste Holm, and Simon Mac Corkindale went public, claiming that Wyman's actions drove them away from the show. The most notorious feud on the set was between Wyman and Lana Turner. Their alleged animosity was so intense that they never spoke offset. To ensure they didn't have to interact, scenes involving both characters were filmed separately and then spliced together in editing. After Turner's character met her demise in the second season, she claimed that Wyman's hostile behavior stemmed from her ex-husband Ronald Reagan's presidency, suggesting a deeper personal grudge. Additionally, the producers of Falcon Crest made headlines when they attempted to lure Richard Burton for a special guest appearance in the third season. The rumor mill churned with reports of a staggering $2.5 million offer for a mere five-minute cameo as Jean-Pierre Charbonne one of Jacqueline Perrault's former husbands. In the world of Falcon Crest, drama wasn't confined to the script. The show's behind-the-scenes tensions and intriguing anecdotes added a layer of complexity to the series, keeping viewers and the press equally captivated. Made it. Made it. Made it. In 1981, the TV series Falcon Crest had its fair share of behind-the-scenes drama. One notable incident involved Lauren Bacall and Mia Farrow who were initially set to guest star in season three. However, the plans fell through as there were no specific roles outlined for them, leading to their eventual absence from the show. Another interesting tidbit from the early script drafts of Falcon Crest was a scene in which the character Dina was giving Lance a massage in bed at the Del Oro Suite. In this scene, Dina demanded that Lance break up with Melissa. However, this scene was later excluded in rewrites. The exclusion posed a unique challenge because Robin Greer had already been hired for the scene, requiring payment without performing the role. On a different note, Kim Novick played the character Kit Marlowe in the series. Interestingly, the pseudonym Kit Marlowe was suggested by Harry Cohn, the CEO of Columbia Studios, as a name change for Novick during her early career. Novick contributed more inside jokes by naming Kit's aliases. Kit's real name, Susan Cameron, was named after Novick's agent during her time on set. Another alias, Madeline McKittrick, was a combination of the first name of one of her characters in the film Vertigo and the McKittrick Hotel on any street in San Francisco, which was associated with the same movie. These intriguing behind-the-scenes stories offer a glimpse into the dynamics of the Falcon Crest production, highlighting the challenges and creative decisions that shaped the show. Falcon Crest, the 1981 TV series, made history by being the first primetime soap opera to feature characters dealing with various psychiatric and neurological disorders. This groundbreaking approach to storytelling shed light on mental health issues, bringing them into the forefront of television drama. While the show primarily revolved around the power struggles within the wealthy Channing and Gioberti families, it also delved into the personal battles faced by its characters. From depression to anxiety to neurological conditions, Falcon Crest tackled these subjects head-on, breaking new ground in the soap opera genre. One intriguing fact related to the show is that when Lorimer Productions acquired Warner Bros. Television, certain iconic props from Falcon Crest became assets of their props department. 
notably Angela Channing's original desk from seasons two to seven and one of the guest chairs still belong to the company, serving as lasting symbols of the show's legacy. In addition, an episode of the series drew inspiration from the pilot episode titled The Vintage Years. This particular episode incorporated various elements from the pilot while introducing new scenes and original characters, excluding Emma. This creative decision showcased the show's ability to evolve and adapt over its seven-season run. In conclusion, Falcon Crest stands out as a trailblazing primetime soap opera for addressing psychiatric and neurological disorders among its characters. Its impact extends beyond the small screen, with iconic props preserved to this day, and episodes that demonstrate its ability to innovate and captivate. And capt As we bid adieu to the captivating world of Falcon Crest, it's an opportune moment to pause and reflect on the enduring legacy of this remarkable series. For many, Falcon Crest was more than just a TV show. It was a tapestry of intrigue, ambition, and family dynamics that resonated deeply with its audience. In the shimmering vineyards of the Tuscany Valley, where power struggles were as common as the grapes on the vines, we found ourselves drawn into a world of glamour, deception, and unforgettable characters. Angela Channing's iron will, Chase Joberty's unwavering principles, and the enigmatic allure of the Falcon Crest estate itself. These elements intertwined to create a narrative that left an indelible mark on our hearts. As you reflect on your personal connection with Falcon Crest, we invite you to share your fondest memories, the moments that made you gasp in surprise or cheer in triumph. Was it the intricate web of family rivalries, the sweeping vistas of the California wine country, or the brilliant performances of the cast that kept you enthralled? Whether you reveled in the high-stakes drama or admired the resilience of the characters, Falcon Crest offered something unique to each of us. Your insights and recollections are the threads that weave this tapestry of appreciation and nostalgia. So, don't hesitate to share your thoughts, stories, and favorite moments from Falcon Crest. Let's celebrate this iconic series together, and in doing so, keep its memory alive for generations to come. Thank you for joining us on this journey down memory lane. Your time and interest are truly appreciated. Warm regards. Warm regards. Warm regards. Warm regards.